Hi there, Dr. Carmen McGinnis here with you. Today we're going to talk about one of the things that I believe can hold us up in the therapeutic process and keep us stuck, and that is the fact that we are dichotomous beings. Today we're going to address the topic of the dichotomous self. Stay with me. Hi there, Dr. Carmen McGinnis back with you. So Freud talked about the id, the ego, and the superego. Buddhist teachings speak of the self and letting go of self, reaching nirvana or the flow. In Christianity, there is the self and there is God's wish for us, the better or higher self. In the therapy room, we explore self-love, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance and moving on. Today I'll discuss how these all speak to the dichotomous nature of man and how this nature can hold us stuck in self-loathing, self-blame, self-criticism, clinging to the past and feelings of emptiness. And I'll discuss how we might gently shift our perspective and meet ourselves on the middle path. I'll limit my talk today to self-loathing in particular versus self-love and I'll take on the other issues over the next few weeks. So think of this as the first segment in a series that will go on for three or four more weeks. In my talk today I won't address my personal spiritual beliefs as to how we come to be this dichotomous state and really in the end we don't know we only know our own beliefs so it's kind of pointless to share them here though I will say that I believe this dichotomous state is a state of grace from which we can embrace all of ourselves it matters not whether we believe that we are tempted by a devil given an opportunity by a god or that we are great enough to encompass the full range of self both with a lowercase and uppercase s self within this plane of existence what matters instead is that we engage in the process I bring to this discussion the concept of opposites and that's what I'll be talking about today opposites and self-loathing versus self-love. Opposites has fascinated me since childhood. I recall sitting in a preschool classroom many many decades ago and asking but why is black the opposite of white when they are both colors? My teacher answered to say that's very clever of you Carmen. Maybe the opposite of white should be licorice and of course she was sort of teasing me. My answer was something like, but we see white and we taste licorice and tasting like seeing is also one of the five senses. So now I was drawing her attention to the fact that how can something be opposite if it's still talking about senses. It, I was a difficult kid. I, I, Let's just put that to rest. I was definitely difficult, but you get my point. The mind cannot comprehend the true opposite of anything. It's always directed to the nature of that thing, and only within that nature do opposites exist. The mind can only imagine the far end of the plane or the spectrum. It was many decades later that I came to realize that the opposite of anything is in fact nothing. So what does this bring to our discussion today? The opposite of self-hate 
is not self-love. It makes no sense because to hate and to love are both to feel. So how can the opposite of a feeling be a feeling? My point is simply to allow yourself the full range of feelings and in doing so to experience all of life and choose which is more palatable. And when we see that hate is so close to love, both are feelings, we find that it's easier to simply take a step toward that other feeling and experience another emotion about oneself than to do what we were told is so opposite, so opposite to hate, to love. And also in this way, just as Preschool Carmen pointed out, we stay in the same sense or sensing place, the heart. Contrarily, when we hold the belief that hate is the opposite of love, blame the opposite of forgiveness, criticism the opposite of acceptance, we must move to thought to explain, to justify ourselves to ourselves why we should make such a move, rather than simply feeling our way to another emotion, another feeling about ourselves. In this way, we see that we haven't done something opposite. We've just done a different thing that is very similar because we're still talking about feelings. And now instead of loathing and hate for ourselves, we're trying on that skin that we call self-love. To exemplify this, I have turned my camera 180 degrees. I'm now facing the opposite direction Oh, but wait, is it? Yes, it is the opposite direction, but it is still within my gazebo. How opposite can it be if it's still here? So what would truly be the opposite of what you saw behind you before over there? The true opposite of that would be nothing. It would be nothingness. So we see that the whole use of the idea of opposite becomes our enemy. And this is our dichotomy. We might instead embrace the possibility that we are simply trying on another feeling when we experience self-love. And that both of those feelings are within the realm of what humans are, dichotomous beings. So it's kind of like being, here I'm in a gazebo, it's kind of like being in a room where there are different doors. And the room is called feelings for self. We'll call the room feelings for self. And I'm going to open this door and it's self-loathing and I can experience what's in there. And then I'm going to turn over here and sure it can be in the opposite direction but we're still in a room called feelings. Uh, or it might just be right next to it. And I'm going to open that door and it's self-love. And I'm going to experience what it feels to love myself. Hopefully this little experiment has been helpful. <laughs> I like the other direction better because there was less weird shadows and sunlight on me. But maybe that's what self-love is. Who knows? And when we take this approach, we leave out the argument that we open ourselves to when we invite in the mind. And we leave open the possibility that we may, again, hate tomorrow. And so we see there is nothing to give up, no cold turkeys to swallow, just a gentle step toward love of ourselves today, here and now and the possibility that we may again hate ourselves tomorrow. I know this is a slightly or very different perspective to my viewers that you may be used to, but hopefully you can see the usefulness in it. Next week I'll bring in a new concept 
and we'll address self-blame. Until then, have a wonderful week. Remember to love yourself. You might give yourself equal time hating, but love yourself every now and then. I'll see you next week.